Tokyo. What is Enterprise 2.0 very briefly, and what is the difference between Web 2.0 and Enterprise 2.0? First of all, let me say thank you for inviting me to participate in the summit. I am very flattered by the invitation. The question of what is Enterprise 2.0 and how does it differ from Web 2.0 is, is a very important question to start with. Web 2.0 means many different things to different audiences. For some people, it's about the new platforms that have sprung up on the Internet and the new communities that have formed. For other people, it is advances in software itself and the fact that we can do many more things within the Internet browser than we could even three years ago or five years ago. For still other people, it has to do with new models for developing software, like open source models. And for some, it has to do with new ways that we can integrate software or combine functionality to deliver more value. One of the things that I really wanted to do with Enterprise 2.0 was provide a very precise definition of the phenomenon and, as you say, make it a definition that would be interesting to business executives, not just to technologists. So for me, Enterprise 2.0 is about how software gets used, not how it gets developed, not how it gets deployed, not how it gets integrated, but the new trends in how software gets used. And Enterprise 2.0 is the use of emergent social software platforms by companies in pursuit of their business goals. And that definition has a couple important parts to it. An emergent social software platform is a digital environment or an online environment where people can come together and interact, but the rules for their interaction are not spelled out in advance. They're not specified by anyone up front. So people can come to these environments and they can essentially interact in whatever form works best for them. It's a very free form environment. What makes it emergent, though, is the fact that even though there's no initial structure, structure appears over time. And when we come back and look at these environments several months, a year down the road, we find a very, very rich structure. They tend to be easy to navigate. You can search and discover things very easily on them. They very often manifest collective intelligence. So interesting things emerge, even though we don't provide a great deal of structure up front. And I think that's what leads to the new opportunities that businesses have and why they should be excited about these new tools and the approaches that make use of these tools. Thank you very much. Uh, another question from Tokyo. Do you see the benefits of Enterprise 2.0 leading to more intense and effective competition between companies? And what are the common behaviors and characteristics of the companies that are successful? in applying this technology? There are three different theories about what information technology in general does to companies and does to competition. The first one is that it really has no effect at all on competition. In other words, it might help productivity, but because it helps every company's productivity equally, no company gets ahead of, another, of a rival because of information technology. There's another theory that says that information technology is actually a great leveler of all companies. It tends to make companies more similar than they were beforehand. And people who believe in this theory point to the fact that we can all essentially buy the same hardware and software. As a result, we might expect that companies would look more alike and that the possibilities for a differentiation actually are reduced. So we'd expect to see much more similar looking companies as we deploy more and more technology. The third theory, and it's the theory that I've always believed in, is that information technology is a great differentiator of companies. In other words, it separates winners from losers, and it does this because IT has two very important properties. First of all, it delivers valuable capabilities. You can do things with technology that you simply could not do if you didn't have the technology. Second, though, is that these capabilities are not automatic. You don't get the capabilities simply because you've purchased the technology. It's, it can actually be very difficult work to acquire these capabilities. Things that are both valuable and difficult to acquire are good bases for competitive differentiation. These are things that tend to separate winners from losers in competitive battles. So Enterprise 2.0 for me clearly fulfills both of those requirements. It can deliver very valuable capabilities, but I also think that it is quite hard for many companies to deploy the new tools and to adopt the new managerial approaches that make use of those tools. 
As a result, I think that over time, Enterprise 2.0 is going to separate winners from losers in competitive battles and make companies not more similar, but actually more dissimilar. Okay.